Philippines, Attorney Linda, Rita Linda Ventura Jimeno, Managing Partner, Jimeno Cope and David Law Offices, and Associate Dean, Professor CEU Law. Attorney Jimeno, your honor. Good honors. morning, Panera. We'll do this very fast. May we request Attorney Cayosa to begin? Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, good morning, Attorney um, Jimeno. Good morning, ma'am. Uh, it states here that you were admitted to the bar in 1986, but you graduated from the College of Law in 1984. No, uh, I graduated in 1985, ma'am. Okay, but your submission says that you did graduate maybe, in 1984. Maybe there's a typo error, but I graduated in 1985. So 1985, okay. You might want to submit a... An, a amended personal data sheet just to make sure that the information that is contained herein is accurate, complete, and updated. Yes, yes, Your Honor. Okay. So you were admitted in 1986 um, to the bar, and so you have been in the private practice of law since then. For 30 years, For Your 30 Honor. Years. Um, could you state, because what I can only find from what you submitted, no, that if you have held any public office on a regular basis, not just as a consultant or as a, uh, on a temporary basis, uh, have you held any public office? Yes, Your Honor, when I was uh, with the National Housing Authority, but that was before I became a lawyer. And uh, that was in uh, 1974 up to 1977 when I uh, was still an under, well, I took, a, I finished already a four-year course, AB in uh, Broadcast Communication. I was hired as a writer initially of the National House Housing Authority, and then I became the chief of the Community Relations and Information Office. Okay. Our records will show that this is the first time that you have uh, submitted any application to the Judicial and Bar Council. Yes, Your Honor. Is that accurate? Yes, Your okay. Honor. What made you decide to apply now, and why for the Supreme Court? Your Honor, I have been in the practice of law for 30 years. Apart from that, I've also been a, a head of, for example, the Philippine Bar Association, vice president of the UPA, and uh, I'm also a member of the Philippine Judicial Academy as a professorial lecturer. Uh, I feel that with my vast experience in litigation, in my, with my experience in teaching as well, and uh, in uh, becoming part of a certain committees of the Supreme Court, such as the Committee on uh, Subcommittee on Rule Revisions, I feel that uh, it is now time for me to contribute more by joining the judiciary. In the website of your law office, uh, among the quotes that flashes you know, in your home screen is, and I quote, no man is above the law and no man is below it, nor do we ask any man's permission when we ask him to obey it. End of quote from Theodore Roosevelt. What made you decide to make this part of uh, the flashes that you would have in your uh, law office uh, screen? Well, we want to uh, project to the public, Your Honor, that um, everybody should respect the rule of law, and uh, everybody sh but uh, that should also make people understand that uh, while they expect, they are expected to follow the rule of law, they should also know their rights and therefore uh, should be conscious of uh, what their duties, obligations, and rights are. Thank you, Attorney Meno. We have actually conducted um, surveys and uh, we have elicited comments uh, regarding your application, um, many of which are positive. However, there was one which um, expresses concern um, on your ability to uh, hit the ground running, so to speak, in as much as the next justice of the Supreme Court will probably have to handle over a thousand cases. How would you address the concern that first, you have no judicial experience whatsoever. In fact, the public office that you have held is very limited, and that was even before you became a lawyer. Uh, Your Honor, I would like to, uh, I beg to disagree with that comment because uh, not only have I been a practicing lawyer, I have been an arbitrator of three international commercial disputes. And as an arbitrator, and once I was a chairman, I have had to write decisions which are called awards. And therefore, I feel that I am prepared uh, to hit the ground running because, uh, in fact, people call me a workaholic. I, I really 
if I have to do something because it's a deadline, or if I have to finish something, sometimes I sleep for only a few hours, and sometimes I have to, uh, I, uh, I, I will not stop until it's done. What can you tell us to convince us that as uh, compared to other aspirants for the uh, judicial post that we are now interviewing for, that you should be considered in a higher rank than others who are incumbent justices of the appellate courts and who have also uh, had more experience in um, litigation? Uh, Your Honor, I have been a litigation lawyer for 30 years, as I mentioned earlier. Not only that, I also teach and uh, I'm an associate dean of a law school, therefore I have uh, administrative uh, abilities as well. And uh, as I said, I have also written awards for arbitral tribunals. And uh, I am also, I'm very much into um, advocacies. For example, number one is my advocacy for, for giving legal aid. That is the reason why I received an award from the UP Alumni Association, because I produced a radio show before and a television show from which I did not make money. It was just for the purpose of making the public know their rights and understand their obligations under the law and uh, to help people who could not afford to get lawyers. In fact, I uh, hired in my office before dedicated lawyers uh, to do just legal aid. So with my advocacy for legal aid, as well as my passion for the rule of law, and uh, also uh, my passion to protect the environment, and, uh, and uh, also restorative justice, which is one of my favorite, uh, uh, which is one of my pet uh, passions or advocacy, Your Honor. I think that I, I, uh, I will be able to contribute something to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court exercises uh, supervision not only on the judiciary but also for the legal profession. What would you propose as a way of uh, improving our legal system and even our judicial system uh, called from your experiences as a litigation lawyer? Uh, improving the legal system? Yes. Perhaps something novel, something like similar to the proposal of uh, Justice Abad uh, to um, modify uh, civil procedure. Do you have any novel idea by which the uh, law profession and the um, administration of justice can be improved? Yes, Your Honor. Actually, I've been thinking that uh, like in the United States, for example, where for simple cases of uh, bouncing checks, we should uh, not require the judges anymore to make uh, to write out a full-blown decision, meaning it should be pro forma in the sense that there should be a template where they only need to fill up the essential uh, facts and uh, the violation and uh, cite the pieces of evidence without narrating every detail. That will shorten the time of judges to, uh, to make decisions. Because I notice, Your Honor, that in the metropolitan trial courts, in the first level courts, especially those handling uh, little cases like uh, uh, bouncing checks and other cases that are in their jurisdiction, what happens is that when there's a hearing, there are 60 to 80 cases lined up for the day. Just calling, uh, just calling all these cases alone would take time already. So I think that if we reduce the time of writing decisions, that's going to also reduce the dockets of the first level courts. Thank you, Attorney Meno. Um, you've handled cases in the Supreme Court, is it not? Yes, Your Honor, okay. but not too many. Okay. How do you view the credibility of the current Supreme Court? The credibility, Your Honor? Yes. Uh, as far as my cases are concerned, I, I saw no problem at all with the decisions that were render, rendered in my cases. So uh, I, I am not in a position to either say that uh, the credibility should be questioned or not, because from my experience, Your Honor, I uh, accepted the decisions, and I, whether I lost or won, I knew that they were rightly decided on. In the court, there would be times that you would have to recuse yourself, is it not? Um, especially if the cases have been handled by your law firm. Yes, Your Honor. 
Uh, I understand your husband is also part of the law firm. Yes, Your Honor. He handles labor cases. Your daughter is also a member of the law firm? Uh, I have a daughter who's a member of the law firm, but my other daughter is with the government, Your Honor. And the uh, oldest one, is she still the office manager of the yeah, law firm? She's not a lawyer, Your Honor. Yes. So there are three of you in the law office. Okay. So necessarily, cases that have been referred to you personally or to your law office, you will have to recuse. Yes, from. Your Honor. Have you made a mental note of more or less how many clients you have had? And, you know, can you remember so that if you are to, to act on cases, that you would be deemed as someone with um, independence and, and perhaps um, objectivity um, if you only handle cases that ha you have not had any um, participation in uh, as a counsel for any of the parties. Have you made a mental note of how many of these that you may um, have to uh, inhibit from? How many clients? Uh, for most of the cases that I'm handling, Your Honor, are family cases and intercorporate disputes. Uh, so not too many get to the Supreme Court. But with respect to the other cases handled by the other lawyers in the firm, I can say that uh, there are only a few right now that are in the Supreme Court. But yes, of course, I will recuse if uh, there's any case at all that will uh, be given to me that has been handled or, that, uh, or a client maybe that has been uh, uh, accepted by our firm. That was my last question. I wish you luck. Thank you, Attorney. Thank Hino. you. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you so much, Attorney Cayosa. May we request now Attorney Mejia to continue. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Good morning. Good morning, Attorney, sir. Attorney uh, Ventura Jimeno. You've been involved in the academy for a significant period of time. Uh, and in fact, you've been a bar reviewer, <coughs> I think, at least uh, twice. Is that? Bar examiner. Bar examiner. Yes, Your Honor. Ba bar examiner, I'm sorry. Um, if you are to critique our legal education, uh, what can you point out as being wrong with our uh, legal education system? Uh, I would I would not call it wrong, but maybe deficient, because I would I know that there are some law schools that do not uh, do not focus on uh, cases. Many of them focus only on some teachers lecture and some uh, do a. Uh, they, they base it on what the law says and do an interpretation. So what I think is the best method would be to uh, require that cases be discussed in all subjects to uh, make students understand how the law is applied with, speci with regard to specific uh, problems or issues. But uh, maybe also, I notice that uh, some schools do not have a legal aid clinic. Some schools do not have um, a subject of uh, apprenticeship or, or uh, apply working in uh, courts or appearing in courts with the assistance of a, of a supervising lawyer. I think this should be required in all law schools so that when they become, when they take the bar, they will be able to visualize how the remedies work and how the judicial system works. And uh, they will also be able to know how the law is applied in a perfect, in a specific situation. Um, do you think there is enough um, or sufficient training for law students who want to uh, pursue a career in uh, the judiciary? Uh, that's one more. That's one more thing I should have said, Your Honor, because I think uh, students should be well prepared by also having a uh, court management or court administration subject. In the CU School of Law, where I am associate dean of, we offer an elective on court administration. I think this, this should be adopted by other law schools as well, so that they will uh, be prepared to go into the judiciary should they decide to do so. Um, what, is your, what is your view on trial by publicity? I, uh, I am not in favor of it, Your Honor, because in the first place, I think it's not fair to the suspects or to those who are alleged to have committed an, a wrong because uh, they should be given their right, their day in court. And uh, so I, I do not agree with that, Your Honor. Do you think there are or there have been decisions uh, rendered by the appellate courts or, or the regular courts wherein um, uh, 
the judges may have been affected uh, or influenced by the media bleach or trial by publicity? I cannot cite a particular case right now, Your Honor, but uh, knowing human nature, I think it is normal for a judge who is also a human being to be affected by what they read in the newspapers, what they hear in the media. So really, this should be avoided. Um, what should be the Supreme Court's role in addressing the environmental destruction caused by mining operations? Uh, Your Honor, the Supreme Court can only act on petitions filed before it, and therefore, on its own, it cannot, uh, it cannot do anything. But if a petition gets into the Supreme Court, for example, about mining, uh, I think it is uh, the duty of the Supreme Court to, to uh, first investigate the facts, whether there's basis for stopping mining, and uh, there's basis for saying that uh, it's going to be destructive. Because on my own, Your Honor, I personally believe that it is destructive because it destroys the soil, the water, the air, and therefore you cannot plant anything anymore. If it goes into the sea, it kills the, the marine life. But then definitely we, uh, the Supreme Court will still have to base any petition filed before it on the evidence presented and on the, on the facts that are in the case. I'm actually um, reading some of the questions from uh, the Twitter, which have been forwarded to, uh, forwarded to us. Uh, so if I may also ask one of the questions which uh, is suggested to be asked to you, will you support a call for waiver of bank secrecy for you, your family, known associates, and members of uh, your household? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, I don't think there's any problem with that, especially if a person is law-abiding, why should he be afraid to, uh, to show or to make a waiver of what his deposits are? Because uh, every, I think we should uh, go by transparency. I believe that people, especially those in government, should be transparent enough for us to know whether uh, there is ill-gotten wealth or not. Uh, that was my final question. Uh, good luck, uh, Attorney Jimeno, and thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you so much, Attorney Mejia. May we request now Judge Ilao? All right, thank you, Justice Gutierrez. Uh, good morning, Pinera. Good morning, sir. You claim to be a litigator for so many years, but yet in your PDS, it seems to be a professor and a mediator, but seems, uh, you have not stated your trial experience. Uh, I just filled up the, the personal data sheet and therefore I had to abide by what is required of me in the form, Your Honor. But uh, I have been a litigator for 30 years, a professor of law for 10 years, a uh, mediator for, I think, uh, over 15 years. And I also, uh, and as, a, as associate dean, I have been there for five years, Your Honor. So all these things I do at the same time because they do not really interfere with one another. I can do all things at the same time. And uh, having been an accre uh, accredited mediator at the Court of Appeals since 2006, do you think that a similar concept can be implemented in the Supreme Court? Sorry, Your Honor, uh, what's the last sentence? You had been an, an accredited mediator at the Court of Appeals since 2006. Do you think that a similar concept can be implemented in the Supreme Court? Uh, Your Honor, I do not think so. Because if mediation happens in the trial court, and then it is again tried in the Court of Appeals, the Supreme Court uh, should already make a decision on these uh, cases, Your Honor. Because if uh, it fails, because in trial courts, Your Honor, judges also do uh, JDR. They also try to mediate cases. So I think that if uh, cases pass through mediation, JDR, mediation again in the Court of Appeals, that means that the parties really want a decision on the merits. All right. Uh, for, uh, for record, this uh, alleged uh, endorsement coming from the former President uh, Ramos recommending your application for the Associate Justice Post. May we be informed of how the former president came to know of your professional 
qualifications? Uh, Your Honor, I am uh, I am from the north. I come from Ilocos Norte. Uh, the president also is an Ilocano, and uh, in fact, we have one common relative who is uh, Congressman Simeon Valdez, and uh, perhaps that is the reason why he signed that. I do not even have a copy, Your Honor, but uh, if uh, if he did, it is perhaps because of my having come from the north, and also because. Uh, he knows that I'm an active uh, member and officer of the Philippine Constitution Association, where he is always and uh, often invited. And if, if uh, nominated and uh, appointed by the president, uh, there will be uh, an apprehension or danger that you may be influenced by the former president? Uh, no, Your Honor. I, I am proud to say that uh, I am independent-minded independent because, uh, in fact, I have had this, uh, this uh, quality ever since. In fact, even as a practicing lawyer, I, I know that I can be independent-minded because, for example, in an intracorporate dispute where uh, one of the stockholders try to uh, you know, convince me to understand his position, but later on, uh, when I see that uh, what he wants is really not proper or unlawful, I still give my recommendations to the corporation on what should be done, and uh, I take the side of whoever is right. All right. I, I also observe that uh, you have a short stint for every employment. May we know the reasons of not uh, having stayed in your employment? For not having uh, staying long. Ah, your honors, uh, I have been long. Uh, I have stayed long in my employment uh, at the Jimeno Cop and the Vid Law Offices. Before that, with Barcelona uh, Law Office, I was also there for five years. Uh, the only reason why I, there are so many things appearing in my employment record is that because I tend to work more than, than I need to do. So even if I am employed, for example, in a law firm, I also do work as a mediator, as an arbitrator. So, uh, the, and these are things that are not done full-time, Your Honor. So your parents hail from Batak, Ilocos Norte, and you consider yourself a 100% Ilocana. Yes, Your Honor. What is your stand on the Bureau of the late President Fernando? Marcos, sa dilimingan ng mga bayani? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Your Honor, it has nothing to do with my, my view has nothing to do with my being an Ilocana. Actually, it is my respect for the rule of law which tells me that uh, the Supreme Court's decision should be respected. And I do respect it, Your Honor. And uh, news reports uh, claim that you were initially invited as part of the defense team of the late Justice uh, Renato Corona. That's right, Your Honor. And what is your opinion on the decision on that matter to impeach him during that time? Uh, Your Honor, I feel that although it was my daughter who, uh, who became his, his spokesperson later on, I feel that there was some uh, sort of uh, an error in his having been impeached, although I know it was a political decision, it's not a judicial proceeding after all, but the grounds used to impeach him are not the impe impeachable offenses under our constitution. So I think there was some degree and a big degree of uh, the injustice rendered or given to the former Chief Justice. Areta, in your record, you do not belong to any religious or uh, civic group. And how well do you go with, along with your uh, neighbor's friends in the locality? Does it contribute emotionally and mentally to your uh, good self, being uh, isolated from the society? Uh, your Honor, I am a member of a, of a civic group in my community in Lobo, Batangas, where I now have a place. We have a residence there. In fact, I don't go home to Ilocos anymore because it's so far. I'm a member of the Lobo Development Corpora uh, Association where uh, heads of uh, the barangays and, and uh, several other, for example, owners of resorts and owners of uh, businesses there 
have formed an association to promote and to develop that locality. So I think I am, I cannot be called isolated in terms of uh, being or helping uh, my community get developed. All right, uh, as a columnist uh, about a month ago, you stated that the ICC statement that, uh, that it will prosecute Philippine authorities because of alleged extrajudicial killings is at best a warning that uh, in the government fight against illegal drugs. What are your thoughts on the rule of law and how it is applied by the current administration? Your Honor, uh, the war on drugs is something that I, uh, I support. I think that we all need uh, to all citizens, law-abiding citizens, should be protected against the drug menace. Uh, but it should also be done in such a way that uh, the rights of people, the civilians who, who have nothing to do, for example, with drugs, should be protected. Uh, what I'm saying is that although we do not know uh, where the who are the perpetrators of the extrajudicial killings, we should uh, we should conduct, the government should conduct an investigation on who has been doing this because there is a news that it could be coming from the drug lords themselves. And therefore, while I protect, while I support the war against drugs, I also feel that uh, the government should be very careful about this and sh because it can be abused. And therefore, uh, investigations have, be, have to be done, Your Honor. What made you decide that this is the right time for you to apply for the position of Associate Justice of the Supreme Court? Your Honor, I'm already 64 years old. Uh, if I delay this any longer, I think it will be too late for me to contribute anything to the Supreme Court. So I think that it is now time for me uh, to offer myself to be part of the Supreme Court so that I still have time to do some changes if I get appointed. That's all. Thank you very much. Thank you very Good much, luck. Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. Good morning, Panera. Good Just morning, Your questions. Honor. You know, one of the rules of the JBC requires that the applicants, you know, in determining his or her qualification, mastery of laws, rules, and jurisprudence must also be tested. Just some basic questions, considering that you are, you have been vice president for constitutional reform in the Filiconsa. Yes, Your Honor. And you work as commissioner, constitutional consultative commission to propose provisions in the 1987 constitution. Okay. Panyera, are you in favor of federalism? I am, Your Honor. In Why? fact, yes, Your Honor. I have been uh, lecturing on federalism because I think it's the only way where we can uh, improve the lives of people in the far-flung communities or in the rural areas. Right now, Your Honor, the situation is like this. Taxation is such that while money is collected in different parts of the country, everything goes to the national coffers. And what is only given back to the localities is their era or the internal revenue allotment. What percentage, Panera, under It's the only 20%, Your Honor. And 80% is retained by the central government. 40%. Yeah. 40%. 40, 60, Your Honor. Uh, and then 60 remains with the, the national government. And then the local governments do not have enough money to develop themselves into, for example, uh, Palawan, which is very suited for tourism, does not have enough funds to develop itself. Of course, tourists still go, but much still can be done. For example, uh, the Malampaya, the income in the Malampaya natural gas plant there, it's all, it all goes to the national government and nothing is practically given to them from that uh, fund, Your Honor. So I think that if it is reversed in such a way that uh, 
that local government units are given the power to uh, retain money and give a share to the national government only, then they will be able to develop themselves and they'll be able to uh, uh, do infrastructure, give social services, give education, because they will have sufficient money to do that, Your Honor. One of the disadvantages, some said, is that the money of the local governments will be in the hands of the local officials and that, therefore, there will be more graft and corruption. Yeah, yes, Your Honor. How do we overcome that argument? Yes, Your Honor. So I think, in fact, uh, what we have been advocating, my, my group, Your Honor, those who are fed federal advocates, is that the, the Freedom of Information Bill or law should already be passed even before we attempt doing this because uh, that will give us the opportunity to look into the records of uh, how monies are dispersed in the local government units and also we should pass now the we should already the congress should already pass the anti dynasty bill because right now while it is not in the constitution uh, no there's no law and the constitution requires that a law be crafted uh, in order that there's going to be no dynasties. But uh, if until the law is passed, I think it is the process of federalism, after all, Your Honor, is going to take long. So I think we should not rush into going into federalism. We should uh, maybe decentralize first, give more power to the local government units, at the same time pass the freedom of information law and also the anti-dynasty law, Your Honor. They also said that, you know, uh, several provinces will be grouped into federal state or federal region. Yes, Your Honor. But, Panera, how can you be so sure that the provinces being grouped, you know, will be income earner? There are provinces which are very poor. So, yes, Your Honor. So, uh, do you think uh, your uh, opinion that there will be effective governance, you know, in the local governments will be more effective than the present government? Yeah. Your Honor, uh, the grouping of provinces to become a state or a region will not be imposed upon them. In fact, uh, in Italy, for example, in Spain, the process of federalizing has been there forever. They have not federalized up to now. What I'm saying is we should adopt the same process where uh, the people themselves or the, re the provinces themselves will want, they should negotiate among themselves who will be together as a state or as a region so that uh, the poorer ones can group together with richer ones. And in a federal system of government, Your Honor, if I may explain further, uh, there's such a thing as equalization fund, which is allotted to help the poorer regions or the poorer states. So this can be taken from the fund given or contributed by the richer regions and uh, to, to be then set aside for assistance. The problem right now, whether it's you know under the present government or federalism, the problem is how to educate our people, especially our government officials, to be honest, so that you know yeah. corrupt and corruption can be avoided. Anyway, yes, Your Honor. Uh, if you are given the opportunity, or if you were or are a member of the Constitutional Convention, what amendments will you propose? to the present constitution? Uh, well, I am, I would, I would propose, Your Honor, that uh, we adopt a parliamentary system of government. And no, no, the question is, what provision or provisions would you want to be amended under the 1987 constitution? Uh, the, the, the form of government, Your Honor, and uh, also the, the form of government? Uh, specific provisions, especially under Article 8 on judiciary. Ah, in the judiciary. I think, Your Honor, that uh, we should have a constitutional court, as in other countries, because right now the Supreme Court is burdened with two, uh, two sets of uh, cases, the constitutional cases, where the constitutionality of an act or a law is questioned, and cases that are appealed from the Court of Appeals. If uh, a constitutional court is created, then it will be able to uh, diffuse, meaning uh, the job will be distributed in such a way that only constitutional issues will be referred to the constitutional court, and therefore the Supreme Court can focus on, on cases that are appealed from the Court of Appeals and other 
uh, and other lower courts. Panjera, that's very wise uh, <clears throat> proposal. I agree with you. There should be a constitutional court in our country so that all cases involving constitutional issues will be transferred to that constitutional court. Anyway, supposing China and the Philippines uh, enter into a bilateral agreement to develop our exclusive economic zone, do you think there will be violation of our constitution? Uh, develop our economic, uh, our economic territory, those in our ECC, Your Honor. Uh, I think there's going to be a violation because without the, if the president only does it by himself without the support of Congress. No, no, bilateral, he can. Nation to nation between two countries, he can enter into a bilateral agreement. Mm -hmm. The two countries involved, Philippines and China. Yes, Your Honor. Do you think uh, I, allowing China to develop our own territory, you know, share and share alike, do you think that will be constitutional? No, it Why? will not be constitutionally honored because then uh, we're going to give up our uh, constitutional right or our jurisdictional rights over the exclusive economic zone which should only pertain to us. In which case, they, it, there should be a bilateral agreement. Then they should also allow us to develop a portion or their exclusive economic zone to make it a, a, a fair agreement, Your Honor. But if only China will be allowed to develop together with us our exclusive economic zone, that will not be lawful. Is that violation of our sovereignty? Yes, Your Honor. It will be. Proposing the agreement is, you know, one half of the exclusive uh, economic zone, you know, will be developed by China, one half by the Philippines. What's your comment on that? Uh, it's, not, it's not going to be lawful, it's going to be unconstitutional, Your Honor, because as I said, we're going to practically give up a portion of our territory, which, is, which belongs to our jurisdiction, and therefore it's going to be in violation of the Constitution. Recently, the president, you know, practically drove away the American soldiers in Mindanao, you know. But you remember there is an EDCA? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Can the president unilaterally terminate the EDCA? No, Your Honor, because it was a treaty signed by two countries, and therefore the president has no power. Bilateral or... agreement only. USA and the Philippines. The treaty is the BFA. Ah, uh, yes, Your Honor. So the enhanced, uh, yes, the EDCA, Your Honor. Uh, he cannot unilaterally do that either, Your Honor. It has. Therefore, how can a bilateral agreement be terminated? It has to have the approval or the concurrence of Congress, Your Honor. Your Honor. Bilateral, a unilateral agreement can be, you know, no. bilateral agreement can be unilaterally terminated by one of the two parties. How? One of the parties, like President Duterte, can notify America in writing within 180 days mm -hmm. that he is terminating the agreement. Or it can be terminated by agreement of both parties. Anyway, let us go to the decision of the Supreme Court in the case of Grace Poe. Yes, Your Honor. Would you have concurred or dissented in his decision, declaring that Grace Poe is a natural-born Filipino citizen? I would have concurred, Your Honor. In fact, why? Uh, because uh, in the first place, of we course, are. Of course, you have read the decision of the Supreme Court. Yes, Your Honor. Penned by Justice Perez. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, what? to have the grounds relied upon by the court and bank in declaring that she is a natural-born Filipino citizen. Uh, Your Honor, she was uh, found in the Philippines, and uh, uh, the, uh, there's an international concept that a person should not be declared stateless. And because she was found in the Philippines at the, when she was an infant, I believe that the decision was right that she should be declared a Filipino citizen because also the Philippines is a, is a member of a, a treaty that, uh, that discourages uh, a, a person from being without any citizenship. And so I think, Your Honor, that it was right for the Supreme Court to uh, declare her to be a citizen of the Philippines. If you remember, the decision was based on statistics. And the 
on international laws and conventions. But you know, you will be sitting soon in the Supreme Court if you are lucky enough. Before the Supreme Court should apply international laws or conventions, and even factual happenings here, the Supreme Court should first apply our own constitution and our laws. And that was not done by the Supreme Court. Imagine declaring here a natural born Filipino citizen. Uh, the, the, the basis is the 1935 constitution. And the uh, citizens there who are Filipinos are enumerated. Number one is those whose fathers are citizens of the Philippines, who are the parents of Grace Poo. And why, why did the Supreme Court apply at once international and convention and statistics? And that therefore, for me, the Supreme Court added a provision under that constitution declaring that foundlings are natural born Filipino citizens, which is really a violation of the constitution. The Supreme Court cannot simply amend the constitution that way. No, no. So maybe we have different opinions. Anyway, you I are respect your decision, to your, your Honor. So thank you and good luck. Thank you very much, Your Honor.